All right, here it is, the much anticipated wrist stability video. In this video, we're gonna go over some exercises that you can use to not only recover from an injury, but also use to help build wrist stability so you can have safe wrists with climbing. So we're gonna start with some open chain activities. Now these are great because you can really just change the weight or resistance with it, so they can be recovery or strengthening. So you can start with lighter weight and then build your way up as you recover from an injury or if you just wanna work on that strength training. So the first thing that we're gonna work on is gonna be our wrist flexion with an eccentric finger roll. So you can do that using your knee to support yourself just be careful that you don't drop the weight on your toe because you don't want to be rehabbing your wrist and it up hurting your foot. Um, but we'll start in that full flex position, so bringing the weight towards your face, and then you just slowly lower that down over about at least five seconds. So the speed is really important. Get it all the way down to those fingertips like it's about to fall off, and then curl it back up. The single weight and the single arm is great to start with, because there's much lower weight that you can manage at first. It could be five pounds, it could be 25, it could be 45 pounds. With the, the two-handed technique, I like it because it's a lot more efficient. Obviously, you're getting two hands done at the same time, but you have to start with a much higher weight load, so you may not be able to tolerate that right off the bat. The two-hand version, though, looks something like this. So we'll take an Olympic bar. We need to use the bench to rest with it now. Nice narrow grip, but make sure you're balanced on the bar. Start fully flexed, and again, lowering it down, letting it roll to the fingertips before you fully flex it back up. So again, about five seconds on the lower until you fully flex it back up to the top of the motion. Okay, so those are two good ones to start working on your wrist flexion. So next we need to work on our wrist extension. Now you can use a TheraBand such as this, changing the resistance just based upon how far you stand down on it. Put your wrist down so the palm's gonna be facing in, and then reverse curl that up. Now the tendency is gonna be for your thumb to actually end up pointing towards your body a little bit, which is okay, but eventually we'll wanna switch to a two-hand technique with a straight bar. Um, again, one hand is easier to start with, you can really control the weight a lot better. Two hand, it's gonna to have to be with an Olympic bar or a straight bar, so a little bit more weight. But we come up through here, focusing on good positioning and stability as we slowly let that weight come down. So as I mentioned, the two hand technique is gonna utilize the Olympic bar. So make sure on your first rep, come up to the top, make sure you like where your wrists are, they're not too wide or too narrow, and then Again, slowly lowering it down. Now with this one, you'll notice at the bottom, my thumb is over top, which is making me work on my grip. If I have my thumb underneath, I'm not gonna have to worry about grip as much, and I'm not gonna work the same muscles. So thumb over top, getting our grip, pulling it back up, and then slowly lowering that down, working on those elbow and wrist extensors to help create more stability at the wrist. Good, so now that we've got the flexors and the extensors covered, we wanna cover some of the, the rotators of the wrist, so the pronators and supinators. So we'll start with the easier version. So you can use a hammer, you can use a PVC pipe or anything like that, and you can do a, not only a bent elbow, but a straight elbow position with this. Bent's gonna feel a little bit easier. So if we start at the top of the motion, we wanna slowly lower that down to the side, come back up, and then slowly lower it down to the other side. The PVC pipe can be nice because if it feels too easy, just make it a longer lever and it'll become a little bit harder. Now you can also use free weights with this, which is great. Just grab at the bottom, work with the elbow bent to start to see if that weight's okay slowly lowering it down, come back up, and then work the other direction. So you're working both pronators and supinators with this. Now if you remember, if you had a TFCC injury and you watched our other video, we mentioned that rotation can be one of the ways where you can irritate that. So you wanna start with a light amount of weight, and if this does irritate the injury, 
then back down. You might not be ready for that quite yet. You can also do this with the arms straight, which is going to be significantly harder because you're getting the shoulder involved more too. So make sure you have the right weight for you. OK, so now we're going to work on some closed chain strengthening activities. So again, these are going to be more compression. It's going to work on good like balance and stability of the wrist. But if you have pain with it, you're not there, you're still maybe too irritated, don't try them yet. But if you can do them without pain, then we're on the right track. So first, instead of a regular push-up, we're going to go into a knuckle push-up. So this is going to actually force us to work on wrist stability. So lowering down through there, controlling, and coming back up with good stability, keeping the core engaged. Knuckle push-ups, first one for our closed chain activity. Next, what we can do is actually try and work on separating the feet a little bit more, bringing the hands in a little bit closer, and we actually do some shoulder taps with these. So now we're forcing more weight onto one side as we get our shoulder taps going. And then finally, we're gonna do some shoulder, or some clocks with this. So we're gonna put this right above the wrist and then go again into that knuckle push-up position and you're gonna actually go in three different directions forcing you to kind of fight that stability at the wrist to create more control and you have to use an appropriate band for this for your strength as you work on that but using those shoulder clocks can be another one to develop good stability with it. Now, if you feel pain or discomfort just on your knuckles, pat it up, use a yoga mat or something else so you don't have discomfort with that. But those will be three great ones to start in a closed chain position to start strengthening and stabilizing those wrists. If you like these videos, but you want some more advanced wrist stability training, we'll be producing another video soon. So go ahead and check that one out as well for some advanced wrist stability programs. <laughs>